Hello, welcome to Coffee Break with Microchip Technology. Coffee Break is our ongoing forum in which we discuss new and evolving technology, all in about the amount of time it takes to drink a cup of coffee. I'm your host, Eric Glattfelter. Joining me in the studio, as usual, is our moderator, Aliyah Fahoot. Over to you, Aliyah. Thanks, Eric. Thank you, everyone, for joining us today. We are currently live on YouTube, Facebook, and LinkedIn, and you can participate in today's episode by leaving your questions and comments in the chat, or you can email us at livestream at microchip.com after the broadcast. Don't forget to follow, like, and subscribe to our social media platforms. Back to you, Eric. Thanks, Aaliyah. All right, our topic for today is transforming outdoor POE with advanced network and security solutions. Joining us is Alan Zwerin, Product Marketing Manager at Microchip. Alan, welcome to Coffee Break. Thanks, Eric. Happy to be here. All right. So before we dive into the outdoor portion and the advanced features portion, let's back up and just talk about basic power over Ethernet. Um, what does it provide and what is it, what is it good for? So as you are aware, in setting up a, a network, you have an Ethernet switch, and that Ethernet switch provides data to an endpoint device. And what power over Ethernet means is you can provide not only data, but also power on that same endpoint device from the switch. Now, originally, when this technology was first developed, there were no powered switches. So what happened was, a device was invented called a PoE injector or midspan so that the switch would run an Ethernet cable to the injector or midspan. And then from there, it would send both power and data onto the endpoint device. And the most popular applications originally were IP cameras, IP phones, and wireless access points. Okay. How long ago was that technology developed? So the technology was developed originally in 1997 by a company called Power Design, and Power Design got acquired by MicroSemi. MicroSemi became Microchip, and today Microchip's power over uh, Ethernet business unit is the business unit that invented power, uh, power over Ethernet. Now, 1997 was when we invented the uh, the uh, ability to put power on a line. However, we realized very quickly there were no power switches yet, so we used our own chip to invent the mid-span, and from that we uh, introduced the mid-span in 1998. Okay, so what's been happening in recent years as far as the evolution of the technology? Well, Microchip has been very, very involved in the evolution of the technology. First, we made sure that it was adopted into the IEEE to become an international standard. And then we participated in the evolution of this technology, not only introducing a one-port indoor switch, but a multi-port rack mountable switch. We introduced the first outdoor mid-span. Uh, we introduced the first outdoor switches. So we've been at the forefront of innovating, and today we are introducing multi-gig switch, multi-gig uh, mid-spans uh, for applications such as Wi-Fi 6, Wi-Fi 6E, and 5G. And we also have seen uh, the emergence of USB-C, so we've created a PoE to USB-C adapter to give the flexibility of PoE to the USB-C community. Okay. So we have a, we have a new uh, device out. Uh, I've got one got one here, so you can get sort of a sort of a look at the uh, the size and configuration there. But can you tell us about uh, the, the features uh, that that make this device unique? Sure. Well, first of all, this is the next generation PoE outdoor switch. We introduced the first switch in the first outdoor switch and it was the very first outdoor switch in 2018. Okay. And at that time, that was a pre-BT switch. That was the standard that was adopted after it that could deliver up to 60, uh, 60 watts on a single port, and it had one fiber link to get data from a source. It was tremendously successful, and based on the feedback that we got, we've developed this next generation. It has four PoE ports, it is fully BT compliant, and today it can deliver up to 90 watts on a port, and it has two fiber links, and these two fiber links give it added flexibility. 
many of the applications, many of the RFPs for smarter cities have called for two fiber links. And what you can do with two fiber links are two things. First of all, you can daisy chain the uh, app, you can daisy chain the device so that you can extend the reach of it, but then you can do an end run back home. And what we have built into this is reliability so that automatically, if any one leg breaks, the switch will find the route back to home and it will continue to operate. So this is a real step forward in being able to enable smart city applications, for example. So it sounds like that makes the entire network more resilient. It's resilient, reliable. That's exactly it. Awesome. On top of that, we've added security features because, you know, this is outdoor and we want to make sure that nobody can get into the switch. Once you put it up on the pole, it is a sealed switch as opposed to many other switches that are available today. So it can be managed remotely and we have built a significant amount of security features into the switch as well. Okay. Now, a while ago you mentioned the power level uh, going from 60 watts to 90 watts. Can, can you give us an example of what you can do with 90 watts that you couldn't do with 60 watts, for example? Sure, that's a great question. You know, when, one of the uh, major applications for the switch is to drive outdoor cameras. And outdoor cameras used to use no more than 30 watts, uh, typically. But today's outdoor cameras are very, very sophisticated. They have sensors in them to sense, let's say, a gunshot for police, or they have uh, lighting in it, or, or they, and they have the ability to point, tilt, and zoom automatically. So all these motors, all these sensors, all these lights require more, ca uh, more power. And by providing 90 watts on a port, you can have one of these sophisticated point, tilt, and zoom cameras on one of the POE ports. Okay, interesting. So we're talking about applications. Can you give us an example of a deployment um, that's, that's made use of this technology in the new device? Oh, definitely. So uh, it's interesting. The a previous device was very, very popular, but uh, the, um, the, uh, uh, to, the, um, uh, the device today was, uh, excuse me, the previous device was popular, but as soon as we announced the, uh, the new device, one of the Big Ten universities up north already put in a requisition for this because they are wiring up 3,700 acres of their campus. Now, this is a northern university, so they have tunnels to get through to the next class and everything. They're wiring up the tunnels, they're wiring up the outdoor, they're wiring up everything using this switch with its advanced features. Interesting, so a whole campus uh, using the switch. Are there other application areas that uh, would be particularly relevant for this? Sure, uh, one of the biggest application areas is security. Again, the base is cameras, but we have outdoor, wire, uh, outdoor security access points. Uh, we have sensors, all of these fall into the security realm. And then we also have um, wireless whether it is a backhaul radio getting information to a remote location, or it is providing wireless uh, access points, or even 5G uh, endpoint units to send a signal to a phone. These are very, very popular applications. And when you combine these two applications <coughs> and add maybe a third, you get smart cities. Uh, and when I say add a third, something like an RFID reader to uh, do tolls, or to manage traffic in the center of a city. Um, the city of London uses uh, RFID readers off of our original switch. They're probably gonna move to our new switch to uh, assess a toll into, onto cars that are in the city during high, uh, during high traffic times. Okay, right, right. Okay, um, we mentioned, we talked about the reliability, we talked about the physical security. Um, can you give us a little more detail about uh, the, secu the information security aspects? Sure, uh, this is very, very uh, important. We have built three levels of security into this. First of all, we have built user authentication into this. And this is the California standard of user authentication. So the user, each device comes with a unique user ID and a unique password, and you have to change them immediately. 
then any device that comes on the line uh, can be authenticated. It can be, it, it, you can set it up so no person or device can introduce data onto the line unless they, um, unless they have been, are on an, uh, an authentication list. And then finally, um, we've built in a hardware protection also. So one of the most common attacks on this is a denial of service. We've built in automatic, uh, automatic defenses to denial of service so that it won't interrupt the switch. Okay, and you can remotely manage these as well. Yeah, so that's another important thing. This, um, this switch is totally sealed, and so uh, you cannot open it up and configure it. Most switches actually require you to open up and configure it. But this switch is totally sealed, so it is managed fully remotely, uh, either through CLIs, SNMP v3, uh, through the uh, web, and you can even do a reset. You can uh, set it up so that ports are on or off at certain times. Who the users who are allowed to be on it, you can manage the whole thing remotely. Interesting, interesting. All right, so, uh, so here's another look at the device. So if somebody was really interested in this, um, how would they get started with, uh, with evaluating it in more detail? So they can contact us on the website and they can get all the information and then we can engage with them. They can test the unit. We do supply sample units of this so that they can test it and then they can order it either through uh, directly through microchip or through distribution. All right. Alan, thank you very much for that, uh, that overview. At this point, let's go to Aliyah and see if we have any questions from our viewers today. Yes, Eric, we do have a few questions. Um, I have a question from LinkedIn and it is, are mitzbands used for galvanic isolation? For galvanic isolation. I gotta admit, I've never had that question before. <laughs> um, so mitzbands are in general use is to introduce power to a line that only has data on it. Um, our mitzbands are set up in the outdoor so that they do provide surge protection of uh, up to 10 kV, I believe it is. Um, but I would have to get back to you on the galvanic isolation. Okay, and another question I have on LinkedIn is, is it good for applications that use a battery? Is it good for applications that use a battery? So PoE has been used in applications where things have been put onto stands to recharge the battery. I don't think that's an outdoor application, but mid-spans are generally there. Uh, that uh, if the device can be um, uh, uh, recharged through a, a PoE device, then yes, we can use PoE for that. Great, and um, a few more questions that I received via email. Uh, the first one is, how big is the unit and how is it deployed in an outdoor environment? So if, Eric, you hold up the unit it's again. It's this big. <laughs> that is the unit, and if you turn it over, just turn it over for a second, Eric, you will see that there are places where you can attach a, uh, a bracket to it, we do provide the bracket, and that bracket can be mounted on a pole, or alternatively, you can screw it right into a wall or something. Okay, cool. And um, another LinkedIn question is, what are the voltage levels? So the voltage levels, uh, I know the wattage levels off the top of my head. Um, I'll have to get back to you on the voltage levels. I'm sorry about that. No worries. Um, another email question we have is, how many switches can be connected together in a run? That is a great question. So there is no physical limitation to the number of switches that can be connected. The limitation is on the data, the data speeds. The more, uh, the longer the run, the slower the data is going to be. And I just got a, a note that says that the voltage levels can be from 50 to 57. Great. And um, what is the data rate of the current outdoor PoE switch? So uh, the PoE ports run up to one gigabit per second, and the uplink ports, one runs at 2.5 gigabits per second, and the second runs at one gigabit per second. 
Great. Um, another question for you is, is there a big difference between putting an industrial PoE switch in an outdoor enclosure and microchips outdoor PoE switch? That, that's another great question. We've had a number of customers who have attempted to put in industrial, uh, industrial mid-spans or industrial switches into uh, outdoor enclosures, such as NEMA boxes. Inevitably, these fail for a number of reasons. First of all, they don't have the surge protection, so you would have to add that in, uh, and sometimes they don't. The second thing is the environment is extremely, uh, uh, the switches are extremely sensitive to the heat and the heat in NEMA boxes build up way beyond the capacity or the cold beyond, uh, uh, goes down way beyond the capacity of an industrial switch. So for example, I went out to Arizona to do this and uh, it's been up to 115 degrees Fahrenheit. It's over 40 degrees centigrade. Um, you're getting into data range, uh, into temperature ranges that uh, uh, industri industrial switches just can't handle, whereas the outdoor switch is specifically designed for all the elements. It's designed for surge protection, it's designed for the rain, it's IP66, 67 rated. 66 means you can take a fire hose and point it at it and it will operate. 67 means you can submerge it and it will operate. And it has got the tolerances for the very high and the very low uh, temperatures to continue to run. Great, thanks, Alan. Um, I think I have time for one more question. Um, and it is, uh, I manufacture outdoor radios. Is the unit available for private labeling? 100% the unit is available for outdoor radios uh, and we are available to private label it so that it will have your name on it instead of our name on it. Great. Thank you, Alan. Um, those are all the questions I have for you today. And if you have additional questions or comments, you can email us at livestream at microchip.com after the broadcast. And don't forget to follow, like, and subscribe to our social media platforms. Back to you, Eric. All right. Thanks, Aaliyah. Alan, thank you so much for joining us today and sharing your knowledge on this topic. And thank you to our viewers for taking some time out of your day. If you enjoyed this, please visit us at microchip.com slash coffee break. You can see the remainder of our episodes scheduled out for season 10. You can sign up for notifications. You can add things to your calendar. And you can peruse our library of previously recorded sessions. Check it out. We hope to see you next time. Thanks.